because it was concealed but right now it will be revealed no he, he was concealed tinago siya noon pero nare-reveal na siya ngayon no yung dala-dala nating bible itong uh, book that you are holding right now that includes the new testament and the old testament ang new testament it is in the old testament concealed Ibig sabihin, yung laman ng mga nakasulat doon sa New Testament, nakatago yun doon sa Old Testament. At ang laman naman ng Old Testament ay nire-reveal doon sa New Testament. Kaya napaka-importante, huwag na huwag kang magdadala ng Bible na puro, puro lang New Testament. Yung blue? Puro lang, puro lang doon, revelation ang nandoon, wala yung nakakonceal the message. That's why it's very important to carry your Bible. Huwag kayo umasa sa mga electronic Bibles because uh, nagiging ano na natin, minsan nakanahiya na tayong magdala ng Biblia. No? You should carry your Bible anytime. Amen? Now, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 2, sabi doon, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings is to search out things. So may tinatago ang Diyos, no? Mayroon siyang hinahay. That's, that's why sabi niya nga, uh, seek and you shall find. Kaya, uh, di ba sabi din ng Panginoon, isik mo yung presence ko. So when He ask you to seek His presence, kailangan mo siyang hanapin. So, he, he said, the glory of the kings is to search out a thing. Sino ba itong king na ito na tinutukoy niya? Sabi niya, kung, kung may tinatago ang Diyos, pinapahanap ng Diyos ang bagay na yon sa mga hari. Who are those kings? Because God is hiding it, you should find. Sino yun? No? Who are those kings? In the, books of Revela the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 to 6, and, the, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, meaning to say, siya po yung unang nag-resurrect, no? Si Jesus Christ. And the prince of the kings, so marami pong kings of the earth, unto him that love us and was us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So dito nakita natin na God or Jesus Christ made us what? Kings. kings. Kings and queens. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, you are a queen. You are king. You are a king. So that's why, hindi ka dapat pa-intimidate kung sino ka. Because you have the royal blood. Amen. He has, saka, he had made us kings. Amen? And besides, he made you what? Priest. That's why hindi mo na kailangan pa ng high priest na pumunta doon kasi God made you, made you a priest because your high priest is Jesus Christ. That's why the veil was, the curtain of the veil was broken, cut into two, two pieces because you can access now to the throne of God. He made you priest of the most high God. Amen? So may, ba, may babae palang priest. Ang body mo lang ang babae, pero yung spirit mo, walang kasarian yan. Amen. That's why God has made you a king and a priest. Amen? Amen po ba nun? Amen. Now, kung mapapansin natin, the, God, the, the God's plan of redemption was, was concealed in the genealogy. Pag nagbabasa po tayo ng Bible, Pagbabasahin niyo po ang Genesis chapter 5. Wala po kayong mababasa niya. Let's, let's read it para makita po natin. No? This is the book of the generation of Adam. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God, made he him male and female, created he them, and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived in 130 years and begot a son. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, si Adam, si Adam uh, 
Kung si Adan nga, naka, naka-anak ng 130, pwede ka pang magka-anak. Amen? Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, pwede ka pang magka-anak. Amen? Tatawa to yung, tatawa tuloy si Sister Ano. Sa Sister Ivy, baka magkakaroon pa siya ng bunso. Amen? So kasi si, si Adam, 130, nagka-anak pa siya. Amen? Sister Michelle, nagdi-desire pa ng isa yan. So sabi niya, and after his image, and called his name Seth. No? And, and the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years. Wow! Nagka-anak pa siya ng 800. And he begot a son and daughters. And all days that Adam lived were 930, and he died. And Seth lived uh, 105 years, begot a son. So 105, nagka-anak naman si Seth. And Seth lived after begot Enos, 807 years, he begot a son. So umabot pa sa ng 807 years, nagka-anak pa rin. Matindi talaga noon. No? And all the days of Seth were, were 912 years, and he died. And Enos lived 90 years and be, begat Canaan. And Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. Pahabaan ng buhay noon. And all days of Enos were 905 years and he died. And Canaan lived 70 years and begat Mahalalel. And Canaan lived after he begat Mahalalel 840 years and begat sons and daughters. And all days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. And Mahalalel lived 65 years and begat Jared. And Mahalalel lived after he begat Jared 800 years, 830 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years and he died. And Jared lived in 162 years and he begat Eno. And Jared Live after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all those all days of Jared were 960 and 62 years and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and he begat Methusela. So mas bata si Methusela na nagkaanak no 65. And Enoch uh, and Enoch walked with God after begat Methusela 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all days of Enoch were 365 years. So pinakabata si Enoch na nagkaanak, 65, na pinakaanak si Metusela. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for, for God took him, and Metusela lived in 100, 108 and 7 years, and begat Lamech. And Metusela lived after he begat Lamech, 782 years, and begat sons and daughters, and all days of Metusela, were 969 years and he died. Sino pong pinakama, pinakamatagal na namatay sa uh, doon sa Biblia? Pinakamatanda? Si Mitosela. No? Si Mitosela because he lived, he lived uh, 969 years. Pag tatanungin kayo kung sino yung pinakamatandang uh, tao sa Biblia, si Mitosela. He lived 969 years. Kaya lang, mas una siyang namatay kaysa kanyang tatay. Kung siya ang pinakamatandang uh, tao sa Biblia, bakit mas una siyang namatay kaysa kanyang tatay? Because ang kanyang tatay, si Enoch, hindi namatay. No? Si Enoch, kinuha siya ng God. Makita niyo sa verse 24, He walked with God and He was not for God took Him. So narapture si Enoch, hindi namatay si Enoch. Okay? So, and Lamech lived in 108 and Two years and begat the son, and he called his name Noah, saying, "This the same, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed." And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 595 years, and he begat uh, uh, sons and daughters. And all days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah. Begat, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Isipin nyo, nagkaanak si Noah nung ang kanyang edad ay 500 years old. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, may pag-asa ka pa. Pag-asa ka pa. Amen? Pag-asa pa kayo. So, 500 years, 500 years, bago nagkaanak si Noah, ng tatlo. 500. No? 
Mi sino po dito minsan na nagbabasa kayo ng Bible pag dumating kayo sa Genesis 5 puro mga pangalan, bigat yan at nilalaktawan nyo. Minsan, minsan ayaw natin magbasa mo, bigat is sunny, 900 years, parang walang minsahe. Pero pag-aralan nyo mabuti ito, ang, ang Genesis 5, yung binasa ko mula nung chap, uh, verse 1 until verse 32, Puro generation siya, 10 generation from Adam to Noah. No? Adam to Noah, uh, at Adam said, Enos, Kenan, Mahalalel, Jer, Enoch, Mithusela, Lamech, and Noah. So, pag binasa mo lang siya, parang wala kang makuha ang mensahe. But if you are going to study, sino pwede ito na marunong bumasa ng Hebrew? Wala. Hindi rin ako marunong bumasa, pinag-aralan ko lang. Hindi tayo mag-aaral ng Hebrew. Gusto ko lang, meron lang tayong tatlong letra ang pag-aaralan ngayon. No? Itong, itong letra na ito, hindi dito sa baba, A or Aleph. No? At itong B, Bet, yun yung B sa taas. Itong H, H, yun doon sa taas. Para gusto ko lang maintindihan nyo na ang, 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 ang Hebrew language, ang letters are transliterated. Hindi translated. Ang bawat letra ng Hebrew may meaning. Kaya pag binasa natin ng mga pangalan, hindi natin alam. For example, alam mo ba, uh, for example, Obre. Ano bang meaning ng Obre? Hindi mo naman alam meaning kasi parang pinangalan, pinagduktong lang yung pangalan ng tatay at nanay mo, pangalan mo na yun. Pero sa Hebrew, if you use their, if you combine the letters, there will be a meaning. For example, itong Aleph, Bet at saka he, pagsamahin natin ngayon, in order for us to understand the meaning of those five generations. No? Now, the word A or Aleph, Aleph, ang meaning niyan is first, strength or a leader. When you heard Aleph, ibig sabihin niyan leader siya. No? He is a leader. And then, when you say Bet, no? It means house or family. So kaya nga, pag sinabi mong Bet Lehem, Bet is house, Lehem is bread, it means the house of bread. Yeah. Diba? May naintindihan tayo. Sister, di ba? Yung galing ng Israel yan. Di ba? Bet means house, Lehem is bread, the house of bread. That's why uh, Bet El, Bet is a house, and El is God. That's why Bet El is the house of God. That's how they use the the Hebrew letters and being combined. So what? Paano kung ang alif at sa kayong bet pag samahin natin alif and bet ano yung resulta? Yung dalawang letter ikumbine natin. A B. A B means leader of the house. Ano sino ba yung leader of the house? Iba father. That's why we call Abba. Abba father. Do natin nakuha yung Abba. Siya sabi ko, nung pinag-aralan ko nga ito last week, sabi ko, masarap mag-aral para ng Hebrew. No? So, Aleph at saka Beth is the leader of the house. That's why we call it Abba Father. Abba. Okay? Are we learning so far? Tatlong letter lang. Hindi ako matuturo ng language niya, no? So, He. Pag sinabi, kaya nga, huwag kayong basta-bastang, uh, pag may kulit, He. May meaning pala yun. He, tumigil ka. So yung he, meaning to say, it is behold, revealed, breeze or wind or spirit. Wow. Maganda pala ang meaning ng he. So pag, pag, pag pinagsama mo yung alep, bet at saka he, diadagan mo ng a, ahab or ahab. Pag sinabing ahab, ang meaning niyan ay, Uh, revealing the heart or essence of the Father. Ano ba yung puso ng isang ama? Pagmamahal. So the Hebrew word for a love is Ahab. Pinagsama yung yung alim, yung bet, at saka he, a, dinagdagan ng a, Ahab, it means Ahab is Hebrew word for love. Amen? Are we learning so far today? So that's translation transliterated. Ibig sabihin, bawat letra, pag pinagduktong-duktong mo, mayroong kahulugan. Hindi kagaya nung uh, yung, uh, yung ibang pangalan na uh, si Charmaine at saka si Jeremiah, uh, Charmaine at saka Jeremiah, ang pangalan, Charger. 
Char kasi, Charmaine, tapos Jer, Jeremiah, Charger, or kaya ang ginawa yung pangalan, Charger. Hindi ganun. Kasi sa atin, di ba? Kung pinag, may mga pangalan pinagsama-sama, so dito, pag pinagsama ang letra, may meaning. No? So, uh, now let's, let's translate, or this additional one, when Abraham was born, ang pinangalan sa kanya ay Abram, so there were two words, si Aleph, at saka si Beth, di ba? Pero ang, nung binago ng Lord ang pangalan niya, dinagdagan niya ng X, ginawa niya Abraham. Dinagdagan niya ng H dito sa gitna. So yung Spirit ni God, in-insert doon sa gitna, kaya naging Abraham. Ganon din si Sarah. May Spirit na nilagay. Kaya minsan pag ma, may mga maarte na mga uh, yung tawag nito na palayaw, let's say Ray, no? Nilalagyan ng X sa gitna, Ray. May mayroon pa lang ano doon may kamulugan pala yun yung pagsininsert niya sa Hebrew term. So, be careful sa mga pinagsasabi natin kasi may mga kamulugan pala. So, let's translate it uh, translate it you know, not, not translate literated but let's translate the meaning of the the five uh, gen, uh, ten gene, genealogy of what we have read a while ago. So, ang Adam meaning to say is man, ang meaning ng set is appointed Ang meaning ng Inos is mortal, Canaan is sorrow, Mahalalel, maha, Mahalalal means bless, and El is God, so it means blessed God. Jer means shall come down, Enoch teaching, Mitosela, his death shall bring, Lamech despairing, and Noah comfort or rest. Mababasa nyo yun sa binasa natin kanina, so sa Genesis uh, 5.32, will bring us comfort. Now, pag binasa mo yan a sentence from the top to bottom, Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching his death shall bring despairing comfort on rest. Sa genealogy pa lang pala, ng mga from Adam to Noah, pinakita na doon, naka, nakatago na ang minsahe. Na my plan of redemption si, si God sa atin. Makikita nyo na sino ba yung ah, uh, Inappoint niya yung mortal man, nagkatawang tao, para ang Diyos, the blessed God, shall come down. Para bumaba. Anong purpose? Uh, para uh, sa kanyang kamatayan, yung mga na mga dispirado, mga may problema, yung mga malungkot, anong tawag mo sa discomfort, sa sarili mo, they will find comfort or rest through His death. Are we learning so far today? So kailangan maintindihan natin na uh, yung palang binasa natin, mayroon palang kahulugan. Now, the flood was not a surprise. Marami sa it, marami, maraming nangyari na uh, many thought that the flood came was a surprise for everybody. No. Because from Mitosela, his father was Enoch. Remember that uh, Mitosela was the oldest man on earth. His age was 969. So from Enoch, his father, na na-rapture, God communicate Enoch na I will bring judgment to the people until Mitosela died. That's why kanina, kung mapapansin nyo, no? that's why when the meaning, his death shall bring. Sa oras na mamamatay si Mitosela, it will bring judgment doon sa earth, magkakaroon ng flood. Just imagine, kung ikaw yung tatay, Brother Noel, sasabihin ka, sinabi ng Lord, ikaw si Ino, sabi ni Noel, pag namatay yan si Mitosela, I'll bring judgment sa earth. Magpa-flood. Isipin mo, pag nilagnat yan, magkatrangkaso, kailangan mong pagramutin. Pag namatay, judgment ang narating. Di ba? Because he was always with God. Now what happened, when Mitosela, ah, uh, at the age of 187, nagkaanak siya kay Lamek, no? Nung si Lamek naman, pag da dating na niya 182, pinanganak si Noah. Ngayon, nabuhay si Mitosela, oops, more additional ng life niya, going to the, to the, before the flood, 782. So, ibig sabihin, itong 782 years, it is the grace period, it is the... The, yung mercy ng Lord na bago, bago magkaroon ng flood. There were four generations uh, Enoch, 
Methuselah, Lamech, Lamech, Noah, bago nagkaroon ng judgment sa earth. Hindi niya sinabi kay, kay Noah, magbabaha ngayon. No. Magpa-flood. Doon pa kay Methuselah, alam na, si Enoch. They preach for generation. How many generations right now that we, we keep on preaching, Jesus is coming soon? Sa mga apostles pa. Kaya do not be surprised kung darating si Christ. Dahil noon pa pinipreach na darating si Kristo. How many generations na? Tinatanong ng mga apostles, kailan ka ba babalik? Ilang, ilang thousands of years na yan? So ganun din sa flood. It was being transferred to generations to generation. Ano pa bang natutunan natin? Galing yan sa ating mga generations noon. How many, how many messengers of God died? Hundreds of years ago. Ang mga apostles. Kaya hindi na bago kung narating si Christ ngayon. Ganon din sa flood. Amen? Are we learning today? Now, even doon sa, sa buhay ni Abraham, in the book of Genesis 22, sometime later, God tested Abraham, Abraham's faith, and Abraham, Abraham, Abraham God called. Yes, he replied, here, here, I, am, here I, am, I am. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land, Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will show you. Now, tingnan po natin, sabi niya, God tested Abraham's faith. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, God is going to test your faith. Handaan niyo yun. God is going to test your faith if you are really faithful in this, what you are doing right now. Sabi niya dito, God has given an instruction to Abraham. Sabi niya, go to the land of Moriah, go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains. It's, it's not a bizarre for, uh, for Abraham to, go, to offer his son because the culture of that place during that time, they, they, can, they burned their sons as a burn offering. That's why God is also testing Abraham, can you offer your son, your only begotten son? Hindi na bago kay Abraham yun. Kasi may mga, may mga kulto doon na ang inaalay nila mga anak nila. So, God was also testing his circumstances kung magiging ba sila sa kanilang Diyos-Diyosan doon. Now, the next morning, Abraham got, got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God has told him about. Now, take note na minsan nag-iisip kayo. Ilang taon kaya si si Isaac ng offer. Tingnan nyo ha, si Abraham nag, nagbiyak ng kahoy, mga kahoy para susunogin ang ang lamb or whatever offering. No? He, ang akala ko nga noon, yun lang mga sanga ng mga puno-puno na dala-dala ni Isaac. Chop, chop woods pala yun. Hindi naman pwede magdala ng five pieces of woods para sa burn offering. Maari ang laki nun. And you think a, a little boy can carry the chop foods? Now, let's, let's read. On the, on the third day of journey, it took for them three days' journey from the place where they live, going to the Mount Moriah. Tatlong araw pa ang ditatravel nila. Do you think a, a boy can sustain traveling three, three days to go there? He's not a boy. He's between 20 to 30 years old. They called him lad in King James Version because the people long time ago lived 900 years. Kaya ba naman umabot si Sister Mau ng 800 years? Ang kanyang boy is uh, 30. Boy pa talaga yun. Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? Yung, naintindihan niyo ako? Na, no, 900 lang years. Kaya yung 20 years old, boy pa talaga yan. Baby pa talaga yun. Even si David, he was already... Uh, uh, si Joseph, 17 years old, boy pa rin ang tawag niya noon. When he was taken to Egypt, no? Now, uh, let's continue. Ang sabi niya dito, on the, on the third day of the journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He stayed here with the donkey 
Abraham told the servants, the boy and I, tingnan nyo ha, the boy and I will travel a little further, we will worship there, and then we will come back, uh, we will come right, right back. Now, ano yung assurance ni Abraham na sinabi niya, oh, servants, dito na kayo, aakyat kami sa bundok, pero babalik kami. Alam ni, alam ni Abraham na si Si Isaac ay isang sacrifice ang inassure niya sa mga servant niya, aakyat kami at babalik. What makes him, uh, what is his, Abraham's assurance na babalik sila? Because God promised Abraham, uh, God promised to Abraham from the book of Genesis that from your offspring, ibibigay ko ang lahi ng sangkatawan. As numerous as star. Kaya kung mayroon kang pinanghawakang salita ng Diyos, panghawakan mo yun, hindi yun babaguhin ng Diyos. Kung sinabihan ka magkakaanak kang sampu, sampu yun. Ay naku po, sabi niya, ay naku po, tama na po. No? Sabi niya rito, he will worship there and then we will come back. Now, so Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders. Now, it's very careful. Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders. Do you think a little boy can carry na pinag pinagchap-chap na mga wood para susunugin siya? No. That's why if you if you read your Bible carefully, there is a meaning. Mag-research kayo. Hindi lang bilisan niyo pagbasa, tapos wala kayo naintindihan. Hindi bata si Isaac. Binati niyo. Between 20. Wala ka wala mababasa, pero pag i-compute mo, paano siya winin ng kanyang ina? No? Si Sarai, mula nung pinanganak siya ng 80 or 80 plus or 90, more than hundreds. So meaning to say, that it's between 20 to 30 years old si Isaac. Now, sabi niya rito, while he himself carried the fire and the knife, and the two of them walked together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, We have the fire and the wood. The boy said, But where is the sheep for the burnt offering? Sabi niya, Tatay, mayroong apoy, may kahoy, saan yung iaalay? Napapasal yung, yung binatin niyo. Sabi niya, anong sagot? Even though uh, Abraham knew by the fact that it is, it is Isaac shall be burned up, as a, will be sacrificed as a burnt offering, he did not say, It is you, my son. Ibig sabihin, kahit nakikita niyo ang fact na meron kayo ngayon, do not believe on it. Amen. Even if the fact that the doctor says you are you have the cancer in your in this whatever kind of sickness, do not believe the fact. Believe the truth, the promises of God. You promise the Lord sa iyo. He cannot say, pasensya ka na. Eh, sabi ni Lord, ikaw daw iyalay. Eh. Hindi siya nagano. Do, he did not yield to the condition, his, to his circumstances. Sabi niya, God will provide a ship. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, God will provide. God will provide. Amen? Kung mayroon ka bang pangangailangan ngayon, pangangailangan sa finances, God will provide. Kung kailangan mo ng trabaho, God will provide. Kung kailangan mong asawa, God will provide. <laughs> he will provide. Amen? <laughs> So God, so ano yung natutunan natin last time? Ano natutunan natin sa dry bones? Kailangan mong mag-prophesy. Sabi ng Lord, prophesy to these dry bones. Come to life. So whatever your circumstances right now, you need to speak to your dry bones. Amen? So sabi niya, God will provide for a sheep the burnt offering my son. Abraham answered, and they, they both walked on together. Now, I want, to, I want you to see it carefully. Kung bakit sinabi kong hidden message because this is the place where they travel for three days, no? From here going there, kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung Mount of Zion in Israel, no? Mount of Zion, Mount of Olive, and this the Akida, the Mount Moriah, Tinatravel nila to ng three days. Okay? If you check in your map, kayo mismo, no? Mag, magbasa, mag-check kayo kung saan, sa Google, saan yung gustong tingnan. Kung it's check niyo yung map, ang Mount Moriah is the 
Golgotha. Golgotha is the place where Jesus Christ was crucified. The Old Testament has the relevance doon sa present sa New Testament. Kaya doon niya pinapaalay si Isaac because it is only a symbol that there is greater than the love that will be sacrificed for all of us. That's why God said from the time, and even Abraham, God will provide. Instead of you, you will be crucified. God will provide Jesus Christ in your behalf. It is Jesus that was crucified. That was, uh, siya yung uh, mababasa natin sa so 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new and living batch as you really are for Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Amen? Amen. So, uh, yung, alam nyo ba itong ano? Yung old yeast? Yung lumang papatubok? Yung lumang pananaw? pananaw lumang kaisipan? Alisin mo na yan. Yung old belief. You cannot put inside the, the old belief and the new belief. Ano bang paniniwala nila noon? Marami silang paniniwala sa Old Testament na pagdating ng several generation, yun pa rin ang ginagawa. Kaya sabi niya, huwag, ka, huwag na kayo mag-alay ng mga lambs because it is not longer applicable anymore because sabi niya, get rid of the old yeast. Iwanan niyo na yung mga sacrifices niyo ngayon because Jesus Christ, the new and, and living, pag sinabi po living, yung tinapay na walang ano, walang pampaalsa, it symbolizes sin. Pag living bread, may pampatubo, may kasalanan. So si Christ, yung siya yung unliven, walang kasalanan, siya yung sinaklipay, siya yung Passover lang natin. Are we learning something today? So it is Christ Jesus, siya yung sinisimbolize doon sa pagsakripay sana kay Isaac. So it was already been planned by God thousands of years ago. Yung sacrifice na gagawin sana ni Isaac ay si Jesus Christ ang gumawa sa ating present generation. Are we learning something today? Now, in uh, Numbers chapter 2, I will close this message today. And the Lord gave this instruction to Moses and Aaron when the, when the Israelites set up camp, each tribe will be assigned its own area. The tribal division will come beneath their family banners on, the, on all four sides of the tabernacle but at some distance from it. Now, pag binasa nyo itong Numbers chapter 2, wala ka rin mababasa doon kundi yung generation ni, yung, yung camp ni ganito, ni, uh, for example, sa verse 3 and 4, the, the camp of Judah, at saka Ezekar, Zipulon, pagsama-samahin nyo, mag, magsama kayo doon sa isang lugar, no? Uh, the division of, Ju of, of Judah, Ezekar, and Zipulon are to come toward the sunrise on the east side of the tabernacle, beneath their family banners, these are the names of the tribes, their leaders, and the numbers of their registered troops. So if you're going to see it, pag binasa niyo po yung buong numbers ng chap chapter 2, numbers chapter 2, pag binasa mo yung buong, num buong numbers, the, the 12 tribes of Israel was being grouped into four groups. Ang first group, ang leader nila si Judah, si Ezekiel at saka si Zebulon, isang group yan. Si Ephraim, siya ang naglilid ng group, kasama si Manasseh at saka si Benjamin, isang group, si Reuben, uh, under niya si Simeon at saka si Gal, one group, and si Dan, uh, under niya si Aser at saka Naphtali. So, uh, ang instruction niya is, panibutan niyo yung tabernakel. Di ba mayroong tabernakel na tinatayo doon? Panibutan niyo instead na 12 surround, instead na isurround sila ng 12, 12 tribes, they, will, they were assigned into to four different groups. So, ang itsura ganito. If this is the tabernacle, ito yung uh, tent ng uh, uh, outdoor, co out, outdoor court, inner court, saka holy of holies, 
Ito yung camp ni Moses. Ito yung mga age niya. Ito yung Levites. So there were four corners. God specifically assigned the tribes in different position. Sabi niya, si ganito, doon sa west, yung group ni Ju Judah, doon sa east, yung group ni ganito sa, sa south, yung group ni ganito sa north. Pero hindi kayo pwedeng lumampas sa edge ng tabernacle. Ibig sabihin, bawal kumuha ng parte dito. At take note of the numbers of their tribes. Si Judah, 74,000 lang, 54,000. Si Zebulun, 57. May 40, 32, 35. Tapos pag tinotal mo yan, 186, 108, 151, 157. Pag binasa mo ang Bible, parang walang walang sense na bakit kailangan pang isulat ang ilan ilan ng total ng tribes. Na pinakaralan nyo to, na parang pag sinabi mo, Oh, may 186. Bakit kailangan pa umabot ng 186? Bakit? Bakit kailangan pang isulat? No? Parang nakakalito. Bakit kailangan pang sabihin na ganun sila kadami? O ganun sila kakonti? Kasi mayroon palang minsahi pala ang Diyos na gustong ipakita dito. There is still another hidden message dito sa camp na Israel. So, west, north, east, south, ito ang maging istura, itsura. Ang camp ni Judah, dito sila, no? That symbol na camp of Judah is lion. Ang camp ni Dan is eagle, doon sa uh, uh, north, no? And dito sa uh, southwest, uh, sa may south, si, si Ruben, ang symbol niya is man. And doon naman sa south, sa, uh, si Ephraim, uh, ang symbol niya is ox. So, ganun ang naging isura sa kanilang uh, camping. So, hindi pwedeng lumampas dito. No? Kailangan naka-level. Kasi rectangular yan. Hindi, uh, hindi yan, hindi yan, ano, um, hindi yan square. Rectangular yan kasi pahaba yan eh. So, ibig sabihin, mas maha, mas malapad ito, itong liku, ang harapan at saka likuran, ang dito, medyo makipot, kaya medyo paganyan. But anong sense? Anong meaning? Bakit ginano ng Panginoon? Because when you siguro kung gagawin natin scaling, I would I would confirm na this is the, the message of the Lord. Kung titingnan mo sa kung siguro mag, kung ganyan ang makikita na helicopter ka no o nasa bundok ka, ito ang makikita mo. Na may nakita kayo malabo ba? Kung nakita mo ni si Christ sa kamp ng Israel. 108,000, 188, mas mahaba kasi 188 sila. 157 sa 151, mas maiksi. So that's nilagay sila sa left, nilagay sa right. Mas mahaba sa baba kasi mas malaki ang numbers. The Bible that you are, that you are holding right now, that you are reading, has a lot of hidden messages. You need to study your Bible Nireveal na doon sa camp pa lang si Christ is already there. May redemption sa buhay mo. May redemption sa buhay ko. God has planned to crucify Him. Nasa camp pa lang. Sabi niya sa, tingnan natin, the last one. So Genesis, uh, Numbers 21.9. So Moses made up a snake out of the bronze and attached it to the pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake could not look at the could look at the bronze bronze snake and be healed. Now, pag binasa nyo ang Numbers 21, verse 1 hanggang katapusan, mayroong play doon. Tinutuklaw ng mga ahas ang mga tao, ang mga Israelites. But it was also written, I want you to open your Bible, hindi ko sinama yan, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Sabi dito sa Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, And I will put enmity between you 
and the woman, and with your offspring, and her hairs, he will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Pag sa ibang translation, sa King, I believe sa King James, yung offspring ay translated into seed. Into your seed, woman, there is another seed, there is a seed, which, ang seed na ito ay si Jesus Christ. No? The seed here is Jesus Christ in, in Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, yung you, si Satan, woman, ang uh, bearer ng seed ni Jesus, between your offspring and her, and he will crush your heel, and you will strike his heel. Ano ito? Si Satan. Tutuklawin ng ahas ang kanyang dito. At ikaw naman, woman, aapakan mo yung ulo ng ahas. Amen. There was already a prophecy in the book of Genesis 3.15. Now, there, the devil is going to destroy the seed. Kasi ayaw niyang magkaroon ng redemption sa atin. So sabi ng Panginoon kay Abraham, adun sa Genesis, no? kay, kay Eve, sabi niya, may seed akong i i ilalagay doon sa bloodline mo, yun ang tatarkitin ng demonyo na papatayin. Kaya nga napapansin niyo sa New Testament, nung si Herod, nung pinanganak si Christ, pinapapatay lahat ng bata. Because the devil is trying to to find out the seed that is going to be born. Hindi niya mapatay-patay. He was just guessing sino yung seed na yun. That's why in the book of Numbers, sabi niya dito, by a snake, you could look at the bronze snake and be healed. Sabi niya, mayroong plague doon, sabi niya, sabi ng Lord kay Moses, ang, ang solution is, gumawa ka ng gumawa, gumawa ka ng brazen uh, snake, yung yung parang bronze, no? Ilagay mo dun sa pool, itusok mo dun sa bundok. Pag nakagat, for example, si Sister Aubrey ng ahas, tum tumanaw lang siya sa bundok at pag nakita niya yung ahas, magaling na siya. Ito yun sa numbers, no? So, kinonfirm ng, ng New Testament sa Gen uh, John chapter 3, verse 14, and Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so, ganun din, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Sinong Son of Man? It was Jesus Christ. So, sino man sa inyo ngayon ang nakagat ng snake? Now, yung bite ng snake has a different meaning. Kung sino man sa inyo ang inatake ng demonyo, because it speak about the devil, you can only Wala na yung bronze na nakaganon. Sino? It is the Son of Man was already lifted up. Tumingin ka. Kaya nga sabi sa scripture, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Kaya nga nakagat ka mga yun, tumingin ka. Lord, pagalingin mo ako. Huwag ka nang sumamba dun sa bronze snake. May mga circumstances kayo ngayon na nakagat kayo ng ahas. Ang kagat ng ahas na yan, ay yung, yun yung sanhi na namamatay kayo spiritually. Yun yung sanhi na namamatay kayo sa inyong pananampalataya. Look unto Jesus. Huwag kayong tumungin kay pastor. Huwag kayong tumungin kay pastora. Huwag kayong tumungin sa kapwa mo. Matitisod lang kayo. Look unto Jesus. Kaya sabi niya, as the sun as the snake on a pole in the wilderness, the son of man must be lifted up. Ang sabi niya rito, tingnan natin, ito yung tsura. Sabi niya, bakit nga pala bronze? Because the, the meaning of the bronze, you know, it speak about judgment. Yung judgment dapat na para sa'yo, nandun sa kanya. Eh, sinong nandito ngayon? Sinong nandito ngayon? Si Christ. Yung judgment dapat na ikaw ang tumanggap, siya yung tumanggap. Yung persecutions na dapat mong tanggapin, parusa, na dapat mong tanggapin, siya ang kumuha ng judgment. 
yung curse na dapat ikaw ang tumanggap ngayon, it is Christ who took it from him. So, what, ano nyo nung later on, pag binasa mo yung mga Old Testament, nakalampas na yung mga Israelites dito, ang mga naiwan doon, ay iba, ginawa naman Diyos Diyosa na ito. Nan, sumamba naman sila kasi nakakapagpagalinga noon, yun ang nagiginawa nilang Diyos. Kaya nga sabi nga sa Bible ka na, get rid of your own. Yung ano, yung yes. Tapos na ito. Ito na ngayon. Si Christ on them. Hindi na bro snake ang nandun. Si Christ, look unto Christ. Pero, huwag kang manatili na maglagay ng cross na may tao. Because Christ was not already there. Christ has already risen. Nabuhay na si Christ eh. Nakita niyo yung message ngayon? Doon pa lang sa, pl sa plan ng redemption ng Diyos, hindi pa, nagka hindi pa nagkaroon ng, ng plan, pinaplano na ng Diyos na may redemption sa kaluluwa natin, yeah. sa generations natin. It is Christ Jesus who took it at the cross. Kaya nga sa kanta natin kanina, I was so blessed kaya sabi niya, He is alive. And some of you are still put, carrying, uh, putting altars na may cross doon, pero may tao. Wala nang pinagkaiba yan sa bronze snake. Dala niyo ang bronze snake niyo doon sa bahay niyo. Hindi na bronze snake ang, gina ang kailangan. Christ has already risen. Sabi niya, look unto me. Look unto Jesus. He will heal everything na kagat ng demonyo sa inyo. Amen. Tinan nyo si ano, mga kapatiran natin. Sabi nga, sabi nung isa, Pastor, pagod na ako. Yung pamilya kong inatake, pati ako naman ngayon, ganito naman. Why? Ang unang inaatake, tandaan nyo yung mga bata because they are defensive.